so much for the best laid plans. And what I mean is this. Yesterday on the video report, a perfect 3-0 and with the complimentary plays. Yes, gave you winners on the Cowboys. I told you they'd win by 174 points. Wasn't concerned a bit with the Giants even being competitive in that game. Gave you the Raiders last night. Gave you the Lions too. Hell, as one guy even put down in the comments section, he repeated what I said where I told you about the Steelers yesterday. If you put a gun to my head, I'd probably take Pittsburgh. Even they won. So with the complimentary plays in the NFL over the past seven weeks, I've only gone 24 and 10. Now, listen, I've been red hot in the NFL with my best bets as well. And yesterday I was going for best bet winner number 20 out of 28 with top rated 15 dime releases. Ugh, I had the Baltimore Ravens. You talk about an epic collapse by Baltimore. I mean, an all time epic collapse. Seriously, I think I bet on the wrong Harbaugh brother. Should have had the other guy with Michigan on Saturday. Am I not right? And, of course, I gave you Michigan as a free play on Saturday. But listen, this is how the cookie crumbles sometimes. And I always have said, even since the days when I had my nationwide sports talk show, the Friday Night Ga uh, Quarterback, the show all about gambling in the early 90s, um, again, no guarantees in gambling. Sunday was week number 10 in the NFL, the 10th Sunday of the season. Saturday was week number 11 in college football because I don't adhere to that week zero BS that they try to sell you on back in August. This was only the second losing weekend I have had college and pro combined the entire year. So I am certainly not complaining, and neither should any of my customers either because it has been one hell of a season for me. But... Oregon, fourth quarter collapse, allowing USC to sneak in the back door, and then the Ravens, an epic met that meltdown yesterday. Sometimes it happens, and then you go 3-0 with the complimentary plays. Eh, what are you going to do? It's why I always say, I never celebrate the wins. I never lament the losses. There are so many gamblers and handicappers here that don't do that. I believe in just staying even keel. Because if you get too high, if you get too low, you're going to be one of those guys that's walking the ledge after your team blows a 14-point lead in the fourth quarter. I'm talking to you, Ravens. Really, you got to stay even, and you have to have select, selective memory deficit. you got to put the losses in the rearview mirror and always move forward. Otherwise, I would never have been able to make it as long as I have either gambling and or in this industry. If I constantly dwell on the past, you've got to move forward and look ahead. So tonight, I'm actually not going to use the Denver-Buffalo game as a best bet. I'm going to talk about it here on the video report and give you my complimentary play. And again, the NFL free picks are on a 24-10 and 10 roll over the past seven weeks. And a unique way maybe to play this contest my best bet actually is going to be in college basketball. It's on Seton Hall and uh, Michigan. Listen, and I'll just repeat what I always say. The opening weeks of any season, usually the first two to three weeks, it's the only time we have the advantage over the God's makers because they don't know anything more about these teams than you or I. They don't know what to expect, so the lines are always the softest then. But that advantage is amplified in college basketball. Because you have so many big Power 5 conference schools playing the little sisters of the poor, you have such a sheer volume number of games that the odds makers are clueless. Generally, that advantage carries over well into the end of December. Ultimately, they catch up. But again, you have these massive cards. And I like to say... I like to concentrate the most where the odds makers concentrate the least. Now, tonight, obviously, I'm using two marquee teams. Michigan and Seton Hall, they're playing at Madison Square Garden. FYI, quick little story for you. So I started doing play-by-play -play for high school sports, football and basketball primarily, but my God, I did women's field hockey, women's lacrosse, men's wrestling. I did everything. When I started to cut my teeth to get into the, originally the sports broadcasting industry back in high school, and um, Phil Martelli, longtime St. Joseph Hawks head coach, who is now an assistant on Jawan Howard's staff at Michigan. And because Howard had a heart procedure back in September, he is now the interim coach for the Wolverines. Phil Martelli was head coach at Bishop Kendrick High School, the parochial school that is no longer in existence in Narstown, Pennsylvania, which is about 30 miles outside of Philadelphia. When I was in high school, 
I did at least four or five games involving his school. And I interviewed him at least two or three times. Nice, nice guy. And as a kid who was just learning the ropes, not only of doing games, but interviewing people as well, couldn't have asked for a nicer guy and an easier interview as well. So, you know, I look at this tonight and I'm handicapping the game and I'm going, thinking two things. My God, I'm getting old and time has certainly flown. So just wanted to pass that along. Hey, let's get to this game tonight. So first of all, you have Buffalo is a seven point favorite and you have the total sitting at 47 and a half. Now we know the deal with Buffalo here, right? Uh, the Bills have, uh, well, they've been lousy. They have failed to cover five straight games and they've only averaged 20.2 points in that losing streak. Uh, Ken Dorsey, the offensive coordinator, is under a lot of pressure here of late. Uh, someone I'm fired. Josh Allen, the problem is he's getting no run support. During that five-game stretch, uh, his number one running back, James Cook, has only averaged total yards from scrimmage, 61.2. He constantly goes to Stefan Diggs and Dalton Kincaid, his tight end. He's targeted them 142 times this year. They've come up with 110 catches for over 1,100 yards and eight touchdowns. But the other 10 receivers this year that he's thrown the ball to, he's targeted them 165 times. They've come up with 122 catches. So there's an uneven distribution with the Bills offense, and it's one-sided because he's not getting any run support either. He can't do it all himself, and obviously that's why the pressure is on Dorsey as the offensive coordinator. And yet you have a Bills team playing at home that you, I always get this feeling that sooner or later they're on the verge of going to explode. But how many weeks can you wait? And yet this is a Bills team that since the start of the 2020 season has the best straight up home record in the NFL at 23 and five. And in those 28 games, Josh Allen at home has thrown for over 7,000 yards and has 77 touchdowns total. That's throwing and running 77 touchdowns in a 28 game stretch at home. That's pretty damn impressive when you think about it, right? Now, the Bills have a lot of injury concerns. They are just beaten to hell. They were already minus three, start, three starters on defense. Let's get the right number of fingers up here. And now they're going to be minus two more starters back in the secondary. The replacements, a guy they just acquired a couple of weeks ago from the Green Bay Packers and a guy they just signed a couple of weeks ago. Ooh, makes you wonder, huh? Now, the Broncos. They are considerably better than the team that gave up 70 points to the Miami Dolphins early in the season. And, you know, in their last three games, they lost 19-9 to at Kansas City, a game in which I had the Chiefs and got the half-point cover. They beat Green Bay at home 19-7, to and then they beat the Chiefs 24-9. to But let me just put a little asterisk next to the win against Green Bay because the Packers suck. Let me put an asterisk next to the win against the Chiefs, which snapped that, you know, uh, what— uh, 17 game losing streak in that series or whatever the hell it was because Patrick Mahomes as we recall early in that day game day it was announced that he was suffering from the flu so did they really beat the Chiefs or were the Chiefs not the Chiefs because Patrick Mahomes wasn't Patrick Mahomes just gonna say you still look at that Chiefs uh, Broncos defense and only four teams going into this week have allowed more explosive plays than the 66 that defense has yielded. Russell Wilson, on paper, has looked good. 66% completion, 16 touchdowns, four interceptions, only one in the last five games. But then you look at that weak offensive line, which has allowed him to be sacked 26 times. You look at Buffalo's defense, and they have uh, three guys with at least five sacks. No other team in the NFL has that right now. But then the devil's advocate in me is saying, but the Bills can't stop the run. 4.9 yards per carry. That's the going into this week, the third worst figure in the league. And you saw what Denver did to Kansas City's run defense a couple of weeks ago before their bye. They pounded the ball 40 times, 153 yards. And that's why they controlled the time of possession 33 minutes in that game. Now, part of me thinks that Buffalo can win this game. And again, I'm saying to you, Sooner or later, that offense is just going to start cranking. 
And yet, I look at the game and I'm thinking, do I want to lay the seven with the Bills? The other part of me goes, God, I think the Broncos suck. I just don't think they're that good. Do I feel comfortable taking the seven points with Denver? And then I'm thinking, why not perhaps take a tease? Why not? Are the Bills, the team that's 23-5 and five straight up at home since the start of the 2020 season, going to lose this game outright? No. I could take them in a six-point teaser, probably 120. I could take them a little higher, 135 to 140, depending on the sports book you're playing at. So take them in a teaser, make them virtually pick them at home. What are you going to do with that total? That total sitting there at 47 and a half points. Now, let's consider which way we could go. Let's say we're playing a seven-point teaser, 47 and a half. I could raise that total up to 54 and a half points and say, let's play the under. Let's go with a couple of scenarios here. 27-24. 27-24, 51 points there. We took it up to 54 and a half. Seems pretty good, right? Or we could go the other way. Let's take that total down from 47 and a half to 40 and a half or 41, right around that mark. Let's say 40, 41. Do we play the over? Oh man, with these two teams, I don't know. Do you think that's a comfortable play? So here's the way I would play it. And again, I'm not enthralled with this play, but I would take Buffalo down to near pick them. I would then go ahead and I would raise that total up Again, 47 and a half and a two-team seven-point teaser to 54 and a half, and I would play the under. So Buffalo and the under and a two-team teaser is the way I would play this game tonight. Again, not a game that I'm even going to watch, but that's how I would play it. Good luck, everybody, and talk to you again soon.